Throughout history, there have been people, or even groups of people, who have mysteriously disappeared without a trace. With no explanation from anyone who knows them, these people vanished. But while people go missing all of the time, these particular cases are especially mysterious due to their circumstances and the fact that many of these are cold cases which remain open to this day. Here are 10 mysterious disappearances that were never explained, part two. Number 10 is Ray Gricar. On April 15, 2005, 59-year-old Center County, Pennsylvania District Attorney Ray Gricar disappeared under truly mysterious circumstances. His red Mini Cooper was found 80 kilometers away, parked near a bridge with his wallet and cell phone still inside of it. His laptop and hard drive were later found destroyed in the Susquehanna River that ran under the same bridge. There were no signs of foul play, but given his career of putting away criminals, one theory is that he was killed as revenge or as part of a cover-up. Authorities went above and beyond to figure out what happened to the prosecutor, including consulting a psychic, digging up a grave, using NASA technology, and running down the over 300 reported sightings of Gricar, none of which turned up anything substantial. To this day, the case is still cold. Number nine is Anjakuni Lake. In November of 1930, on a cold full moon night, fur trapper Joe LaBelle returned to the Anjakuni fishing village on Anjakuni Lake in Nunavut, Canada looking to trade goods with the locals. However, upon his arrival, he immediately found himself standing in a ghost town. Every one of the villagers seemed to have disappeared, as if the town had been completely evacuated, though they'd left behind most of their belongings, including their prized rifles and kayaks. Some of the homes contained half-cooked food and several dead dogs. Adding to the mystery, all of the graves in the village's cemetery had been dug up and left empty. There were no signs of where the townsfolk or those that were dug up had gone, but nearby trappers reported seeing a mysterious blue light over the village that vanished into the darkness. Number eight is the Yuba County Five. On February 24, 1978, five friends, Jack Madruga, Gary Mathias, Jackie Hewitt, Ted Weir, and William Sterling, got in a car and drove from Yuba City, California, headed for the city of Chico. The group of friends, who ranged in age from 24 to 32, had met while in a day treatment program for mentally handicapped adults and were traveling to attend a basketball game. However, sadly, the group never made it home. Jack's abandoned car was found off a mountain road in Plumas National Forest, though why it was so far off the route home is unknown. The remains of Jack, Jackie, William, and Ted were found in the forest under mysterious circumstances. However, Gary was never found. It's still a mystery to this day who or what led the men into the mountains and what exactly happened to the fifth friend. Number seven is the 9th Regiment. During the second century, the Roman 9th Legion led battles across Europe and Africa before invading Britain. Around 109 AD, the 9th made their way to Caledonia in modern day Scotland to battle for control of the land against a large group that was rebelling against them. Despite being well-trained and heavily armored, over 5,000 men marched north towards the rebellion and never returned. In fact, not only were they never heard from again, they were never found again. There isn't even a shred of evidence that shows that there was a battle fought in that particular area around that time. The warriors seemingly vanished from history in an instant. Some historians think that they disbanded or relocated, but no records have ever been found to conclusively say what happened to the ninth. Number six are the Beaumont siblings. 
On the morning of January 26, 1966, the three Beaumont siblings, nine-year-old Jane, seven-year-old Arna, and four-year-old Grant, took the short trip to Glenelg Beach near Adelaide, Australia, to celebrate the official national day of the country. After begging their mother, Nancy, to let them go, she relented and gave them bus fare. They were supposed to go for a quick swim and then be home that afternoon by 2 p.m. But sadly, the children never returned from the trip. Witnesses saw the children playing with a mysterious young man at the beach, but he was never identified. Since then, police have investigated thousands of leads and dug up land in a number of places, searching for them or even a clue as to what happened. However, no trace of the Beaumont children has ever been found. Number five is the Dalso case. In a single day, specifically July 29th, 1965, two separate disappearances occurred in Gothenburg, Sweden that would leave the city's residents shaken for a long time. The first involved shipyard workers, Gay Carlson, Jan Olaf Dalso, and Shell Ock Johansson, who drove out of town but to where no one knows. The men had been involved in some petty crime but weren't considered bad people. The second disappearance involved another man named Hubner Lundqvist. He was traveling through the area and it's suspected that he may have actually been picked up by the three other men, only to suffer the same fate they did, whatever that may be. None of the four men were ever seen again and the mystery is one of Sweden's most infamous cold cases. Number four is Hoa Verde. In February 1923, a group of visitors to the Brazilian town of Hur Verde made a horrifying discovery. Though the small town was considered home to around 600 citizens, when the group arrived, they found that every single one of the townspeople had disappeared. All of their possessions had mysteriously been left behind as if the entire town suddenly without warning or preparation of any kind just left. The only clues found were a gun that had been fired within 24 hours of the discovery and a chilling note that was written on a chalkboard in the schoolhouse that read, there is no salvation. One theory suggests that the villagers may have been trying to escape guerrilla warfare, but if so, why would they not take their possessions? Nobody from Hur Verde was ever seen again, or for that matter, even heard from again. Number three is Granger Taylor. On the night of November 29, 1980, 32-year-old Granger Taylor from Duncan, a city in Vancouver Island in British Columbia, Canada, left a note for his parents at their farm outside of town. The note said that he was going to board a spaceship and fly off to explore the universe. It also relayed his promise that he would return in 42 months. That night, he and his bright pink Datsun pickup truck were last seen leaving a local diner. 42 months later, his promise to return was broken and he remains missing. Taylor's friends called him a genius, but also said that he had become obsessed with aliens and how their technology would likely work. He even built a replica UFO out of satellite dishes, as well as scrap metal on the family's property, complete with a couch and stove inside. Granger believed that he was making contact with something out in space, and perhaps he did, as he was never heard from again. Number two is Glenn Miller. Alton Glenn Miller was one of the best known big band leaders of the 1930s and 40s. During World War II, the famous American musician toured with his band to entertain the troops and improve morale. They were always a hit, that is, until December 15, 1944, when Miller was scheduled to fly from England to France for a show, but the small Royal Air Force plane that he was on never landed at its destination. The aircraft and all the people on board it vanished over the English Channel with no explanation as to how or why. Theories range from espionage, sabotage, enemy fire, and mechanical error, but with no evidence of a crash, his disappearance remains unexplained and is considered one of the most enduring mysteries of World War II. 
And number one is Maura Murray. Just after 7 p.m. on February 9, 2004, 21-year-old nursing student Maura Murray was over 200 kilometers from her dorm at the University of Massachusetts Amherst when she crashed her car into a snowbank in Haverhill, New Hampshire. An eyewitness called 911 but told the operator and later the authorities that Maura didn't appear to be injured. When police arrived 10 minutes later, Mora was gone. Earlier that day, she had emailed her professors and her supervisor that there had been a death in the family before packing up, withdrawing $280 from an ATM, and purchasing $40 worth of alcohol, much of which was found spilled in the car. All of this indicated that she was running away, but where and exactly why, no one knows. 